If your little one is getting ready to reach the exciting milestone of crawling and you want to support them, then you are definitely watching the right video. You told me more than once to show you my intention. My brain gets blocked at times, but now somehow I'll give you my attention. You've got to know that I. Hi, my name is Brittany Kelly. I'm a mom of four and I share videos for other super moms who are trying to parent without perfection from a full cup and give their children and their family the best support that they absolutely can. So hit the subscribe button, make sure the notification bell is on all and go ahead and hit like while you're at it. Now let's get to this crawling stuff. Okay, so in this video, first I'm going to go over the importance of crawling, then keys to crawling success. Then I'm going to show you actual activities that you can do that are going to help support your baby getting to that milestone of crawling even sooner. And finally, I'm gonna tell you about when my children, my little babies started crawling because truly every child is very different. Crawling is really hard. If you don't believe me, get down on the floor right now and go ahead and crawl around your house. <laughs> it's difficult. So our babies are doing something super amazing and crawling is a huge milestone, similar to a baby's first steps. They are growing and learning things that they've never done before. When they start doing the cross motion of being on their hands and knees, they are actually engaging both sides of their brain. It's a bilateral movement that works both sides, the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. So it's really, really, truly an exciting moment and they are learning and they will grow even more after reaching this milestone. Crawling actually engages the symmetric tonic neck reflex, which actually allows the baby to independently move their upper and lower body. So much going on with this milestone. Crawling also improves hand-eye coordination because basically the baby eyes a target, something that they want, and then they go after it and they reach for it with their hand. So that crawling, right, with the eye, crawl, hand coordination is pretty advanced for them. So on average, babies crawl somewhere between eight and 10 months, but there are a lot of babies that crawl at six months, a lot of babies that crawl a little bit later. So the range is so wide for a baby crawling so if you're here I'm assuming your baby is somewhere in that range and this is an exciting time keys for crawling success so it's okay to have them in something that has their full body covered including their toes however the optimal item for you to have them wearing is just a plain onesie where their hands and their feet and their legs are exposed. If they can be in just a diaper and the area is nice and warm and cozy, then sure, get them right down to the diaper. But that is the best thing for you to have them in so that they can really get their toes engaged to help them kind of plant their toes down on the floor and push themselves forward. It's really key to have their hands and their feet exposed. And not having anything on the leg, especially something where the item is all one piece, is a little bit better because it keeps them from actually like having the clothing kind of pull and create some type of friction between their movement. It creates a, a little bit of a resistance. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And that might be a, a tiny bit discouraging in the beginning, but as they they progress and master the skill it doesn't matter you can create new types of obstacles such as resistance with their clothing so that they become stronger and more capable of doing these gross motor skills another key to success is environment of course you want it to be baby proof safe if it's not 100% baby proof you need to be hyper vigilant and make sure that you're there for every single second so that they don't put anything in their mouths or get into any danger but you want to make sure the area is uh, very wide 
wide for them to be able to move all over the place and optimally if they are still doing kind of the army crawl where they're flat then you want the surface to be as smooth as possible but if they're on their knees if you can have them on a thicker carpet then that actually helps and supports them a little bit better than the smooth surface but as you know when babies start crawling they will crawl on any and everything but I'm just talking about here where we're trying to support them into getting to that milestone initially also in the environment you want to have items that they love things they'll go after i noticed that my kids will even go after just my fingers i mean if i put my fingers on the mat if i'm really engaging and exciting they'll go after me but the number one thing that they'll go after well two things they will go after something that is new they've never seen it before and they are interested they're going to be very motivated to get to it and things i always have so like my phone the remote control <laughs> car keys things that you don't want them to touch put that down and watch them try to crawl another key to success for supporting the crawling milestone we have to take into consideration the frequency and intensity in which they actually are practicing now you want to get them on the floor as often as possible but in short many sessions so you want to keep it brief maybe two minutes three minutes but multiple times a day I mean if you get up to like 20 30 sessions a day that's wonderful uh, but you want to keep them a little bit shorter pay attention to whether or not they're getting irritated you just really want to focus in and zero in on what they're doing and how they're feeling and if it's time to switch to something else or give them a little bit of a break as they get used to it more and more you can start increasing the time so it really depends on how much tummy time you have before and how long they were on their tummies before some babies get four hours of tummy time a day which is probably the optimal amount of time total but just not all in one session I mean if they would be exhausted and of course as the duration of these sessions increase the frequency will decrease so the baby can just get on down and crawl and you can be there in their environment make sure it's safe and just watch them go so the first thing I want to talk to you about is my anecdotal experience which is my children actually learned how to to move in a circle first before they learn how to scoot and crawl forward very very interesting but it really happened for all of them so I started to lean into making sure that they could move themselves in a circle first so I would take an object their favorite or anything that was really exciting for them new objects are always extremely exciting so if you have something new and you can take that and you move it around in a circle remember to pause and let them actually engage and touch the item as well as you move it along if you are always moving it along and they're doing this chasing thing they actually tend to get a little bit frustrated because they don't get to enjoy the item ever and I get that there has to be some sort of reward for moving so make sure you pause along the way as you move the baby in a circle to get them moving and ready for creeping and crawling so now that you've got them moving and you see them moving in a circle now we're going to try to encourage them to move forward I know you might notice when they're doing kind of the army crawl that they do the first move backwards or they tend to move toward items backwards so we want to get them moving forward and to do that we can do things such as get them on their knees and rock them back and forth and try to engage them to move forward or we can actually have them flat on their tummies take like a towel or a blanket and put it behind their feet and let them press against that or they can press against your hands or your knees or anything that you have that's soft that they can press against to get that forward motion if you have something like a crawling track that you've been using for tummy time you can actually create a small incline nothing where they're going to tumble forward but very slight small incline so that they can get that motion uh forward and downward that actually is really helpful as well 
Now, once they are doing a little bit of forward motion, or even if they aren't yet, you can start incorporating some obstacles for your little one. So something I like to do is to take a mat and have them try to get up on the mat, or take a cushion from the couch and try to have them get up on the cushion from the couch. I can sit in front of them, I can sit behind them, but just keep them engaged and keep them excited. If they start getting a little irritated with their tummy time or doing this crawling practice, if they take a pacifier, you can give them a pacifier and usually that can extend your session a little bit longer. But you definitely want to make it as fun as possible. If they do get too irritated, then definitely pick them up, reset, come back to it later, give them a little bit of a break but I like to create the obstacles because that really engages their muscles, right? Right now, we're trying to make sure that they are strengthening their shoulders, back, their hands, arms, their necks, right? Their feet, their calves. We're really strengthening the whole body and getting it really engaged with these gross motor skills. So obstacles can kind of create new ways in which the muscles can actually move that they aren't engaging in when they are completely on flat floor. So try this out. Let me know in the comment section how it goes. Make sure you have all hands around the baby so that they are super safe. And if your baby is six, seven, eight, Eight, nine months old and they haven't crawled yet and you are super concerned but all other aspects of the baby seem pretty normal calm down sis okay don't stress the range for normal is wide there are so many factors that go into helping your baby reach this milestone including their individual personality so you're watching this video so i know you're doing the research i know you're trying to find out what you can do to help your baby so you are doing a great job i want to tell you about my kids because i have four kids they all milestones at different times really and truly my earliest crawler which was at six months old, was my latest walker at 13 months old. My latest crawler, which was at eight and a half months old, was my earliest walker two weeks later at nine months old, she started walking. So <laughs> please, please, please give yourself and your baby some grace and know that it's okay and you're doing a great job. If you have any really, really deep concerns, then definitely talk to your pediatrician, have them check the baby out and make sure that everything is fine. But I'm sure you are doing an absolute great job. Personally, the crawling milestone is one of the more stressful milestones for me as a parent because they're on the floor and they love to find the teeniest, tiniest thing uh, that you don't want them to put in their mouths. And it's like this horror moment where they're like slow-mo putting something in their mouths that they're not supposed to. So I get a little bit stressed out about it. The gates start coming up and everything like that. But it is a part of their development they are so excited about it and to just watch their little excited faces it's always worth it thank you for stopping by please if you have not subscribed and liked yet go ahead and do that now i'm gonna leave a playlist of my other videos to check out if you haven't gotten a chance to see some of my other videos about teaching and supporting your babies and toddlers and young children at home. I look forward to seeing you in another video and I will talk to you in the comment section. Bye.